second thing that I'd like to talk about here today uh, in this presentation is about some additional client libraries, you know, beyond the OSLC for J tools that we're, we're looking at providing in Leo um, to assist with the development of consumers or clients of o OSLC uh, implementations. So OSLC for J itself and its samples, I think folks who've looked at it have commented that it's it's tilted towards provider implementations. It shows me how to build build OSLC providers, but it's a very common use case for for folks um, in the OSLC world or perhaps in the rational jazz world to just want to consume. I don't I don't want to write a provider. That's you know I, I want to let a tool vendor do that, or perhaps uh, an integrator is going to write a provider if I need one. I want to be able to you know consume things from an OSLC. Uh, from an OSLC provider. So the um, the examples that I mentioned before that we have out there are all provider samples. So we, we recognized a, a need for some additional client samples as well as uh, some additional client libraries to assist with development on the consumer side of things. Um, OSLC for J and JAXRS in general are a good fit for consumers too, just in the general case. Um, providing the Java definitions of an OSLC resource, that's useful to a consumer. I want to be able to transform you know, something into a Java change request or into a Java test plan or requirement. So the, the ability in OSLC for J to serialize and deserialize from Java to uh, the wire format is still useful still good fit for consumers, as well as the um, JAXRS stuff, maybe not so much in terms of annotating services so that I can provide those services, but I need some sort of a JAXRS client to help me consume those services. So that's um, uh, that, that's where JAXRS or Wink, Apache Wink sort of fit in on the client side of things, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So what we've done, we've recognized, you know, the need for some additional work here, and there's new work that's going on in Leo right now. Um, started probably in August, September, uh, and has moved forward some since then, and we're hoping to accelerate it here at the end of the year to add additional libraries that focus on these consumer scenarios. I think, um, yeah, both both from a Java and a non-Java perspective. So one thing that we have. Uh, it's out in Leo today. It's being developed, so I wouldn't claim it's you know complete, but it is. Uh, it's being used in several applications, so it's a uh, you know by no means just an experimental or prototype thing. It's it's um, actually useful today. It is a client library for both OS a Java client library for both OSLC as well as some extensions to it that are specific to some of the Rational Jazz products, which we've gotten a lot of feedback um, from folks that. You know, want to be able to develop integrations with the Rational Jazz product. So, sort of, sort of as an additional extension to just the base OSLC consumer support, we've got some extensions for Jazz as well as some samples of that as well. If folks are interested in that, we would certainly welcome you know extensions or or samples for you know other OSLC implementations as well. We're not trying to make this specific to you know any one company's OSLC. Implementation, but it just so happens we deal with uh, many of us deal with the Rational Jazz products every day, so that was a, a natural sample to put out there. Um, so it does use OSLC for J as its basis. Um, it's a generic. There's a generic OSLC client API. There's resource definitions out there in Java for things that I mentioned before: change requests, test cases, automation plans, different types of OSLC resources. So you don't have to go write a Java object to represent those things yourself, and you can certainly extend the ones that we put out there to you know, represent something like a, a Bugzilla bug or a, a rational team concert work item, things like that, you know, additional attributes that they might have that aren't in the base OSLC resource. Um, supports all the, the different types of HTTP APIs you'd expect, and just like the um, you know, OSLC for J on the provider side, it will help with the serialization and deserialization of the resources to RDF or JSON. Uh, it also has uh, the ability to handle OSLC queries and OSLC paging. So that's something that's important on the client side. If I'm doing queries that are returning large numbers of, of resources and I want to be able to page through them, 
I don't want to have to write that code myself. So the, the, eight, the client APIs that are out there assist with help you build the query and help you page through the result set that comes back from that query. Uh, there are, as I mentioned, there are some Jazz-specific add-on APIs that help you deal with uh, the root services API, if you're familiar with the Jazz products. I think we talked about some of that on the, the browser debug session. And some things to help you with um, Jazz form login. There's also some OAuth, uh, an OAuth client out there as well. Although, you know, that's a little bit different. We need to develop a good sample for that because there's usually a, you know, a web-based authentication step involved in the OAuth dance. But the basics are out there in terms of of having an OAuth client on a, you know, a sample of how to use that OAuth client as well. And as I mentioned before, we do have samples of using this client with some of the Rational Jazz products, Rational Team Concert, Rational Quality Manager. There's also been uh, contributed, one of the community members has contributed a, a consumer of the new um, OSLC automation spec, which is just going into finalization now. He, to get started with using this client library, he thought it would be useful to develop an automation consumer. So that's out there as well. And as I mentioned before, this client is under active development um, right now. We are looking for uh, contributions to it. Before I move on, I'm just going to really quickly show in my, uh, in my Eclipse workspace here. Hang on one sec. I just wanted to show just a little bit of the structure of this library as well as a little bit what some of the sample code looks like. You know, basically, there's a client, a new client project that's out there in the um, Git repository, and it has a couple of different packages in it. One is, you know, just an OSLC client. Another is a some Jazz extensions, and the third one is some some OSLC common resources, the Java definitions for them. So you can see there's some for the QM spec, the test case, test plan, those types of things change request for the change management spec, and also some automation ones. We're looking to add additional ones as well, requirements, requirement collections, things from other specifications. Uh, you can expect to see those added to this package as well. And just in terms of the, the client itself, you know, this isn't final. Um, as I mentioned, it's under development, but the structure is looking pretty good in terms of, you know, having having these a base OSLC client and then having perhaps additional extensions to it for for other technologies. Uh, and then, sorry for the scrolling, but in terms of the samples, um, we have some some pretty pretty basic samples here uh, for change management and quality management, as well as a, um, a more uh, complex sample for the automation spec. What I have up here in the main part of my workspace is for the RTC sample. And it just shows, you know, the, the, the code's um, commented in such a way that it shows, you know, the exact steps that are being taken. And it has a couple scenarios in it, you know, basically going through the login procedure for logging into a Jazz server, RTC server, and then goes through some scenarios like running a query for the open change requests and paging through them, running queries for specific change requests, um, creating work items, and uh, basically just trying to, with the comments, talk you through some of the samples. So, you know, folks that are interested in creating uh, OSLC consumers, especially for, you know, perhaps something like Rational Team Concert or, or another change management provider, uh, there's a generic sample as well that's not specific to Rational products. If you want to take a look at that, I would encourage you to do so. I think you'll find it uh, useful. I'll stop and breathe there. If anybody has questions, please go ahead and jump in. Okay. Uh, so beyond beyond just OSLC for J as it exists today, and the the client library that's being actively developed, there's two other libraries that we're hoping to get packaged up soon and make available by the end of the year. I mean, the code's out there. It's, it's, it's usable as it is. It's just that it needs to be built from source. We're working on you know, getting it packaged up into proper jar files with their dependencies and getting those released uh, a little bit later this year, uh, perhaps early next year. The first library is a, a query, OSLC query library that 
it's really meant to help you with um, parsing and dealing with OSLC query syntax so that you don't have to go through and um, parse and tokenize and whatever OSLC queries as they come in. It takes care of that and basically builds a query tree that you can use. The Bugzilla adapter has a good example of how you can use that in practice to go from OSLC queries to something that's useful for querying a, a back end. In this case, the back end would be um, an actual Bugzilla server, but you know, perhaps it, it might be an SQL server, it might be some other something else on the back end, but it sort of it's a layer of abstraction between OSLC raw query syntax and whatever you have on the back end there. And that, that's out there and available today. The second library that we've just um, gotten final approval from the Clips Foundation for its dependencies is an OAuth library. And basically what that is, is it's a set of packages plus a web app that um, to try to help folks that uh, need to add an OAuth provider to an application, provider support to an application. So if you have an existing change management provider and you want to integrate with something that uses OAuth, like perhaps Rational Quality Manager, that um, basically want to use OAuth between those, or even um, just enabling OAuth in your application for for consumers to use, um, it, it helps a lot with that. There's a core package which provides a lot of the OAuth configuration and validation services. Is this a valid key? Stuff like that. There's a consumer store package to help with persisting consumer and token information. Um, it can use a today it can use a Derby database or file system. It can also be extended. It's very uh, extensible if you want to use some other method to persist your uh, OAuth um, consumer and token information. And there's also a web application that it comes with that handles um, request access and token handling and gives a just a real basic UI to manage keys and key approval to go in and say, yes, I approve this key. Um, go ahead and give that um, issuer, you know, exchange their request token for a real access token. Uh, it, this is also used in the Bugzilla sample. So we, all, all of this stuff that I'm talking about today, we're trying to use it in that Bugzilla sample and really make it a, a good example of all these different aspects of the libraries that exist in LEO today. Uh, the OAuth library does use the Google Code OAuth library. That's what just got approved by the Eclipse Foundation. So we should be good to package that one up uh, here very shortly and, and make it available. Uh, let's see. So in terms of non-Java libraries, uh, we do have, there was a recent webcast earlier this month talking about a couple of Perl client libraries that were re recently contributed by um, uh, Max Volkin and Stephanie Uyel. Um, there, I have the URL there for the, um, the recent webcast. So if you're interested in you know, some non-Java libraries, something like Perl, I encourage folks to go take a look at that. Uh, we're also looking at a potential contribution of a C-sharp and a, a basically a .NET um, SDK as well. It's not quite available yet. It's going through the process of getting its dependencies approved, but it um, takes an approach very similar to OSLC for J, using C Sharp's version of annotations and using um, .NET packages for you know instead of Apache Gen, it uses something called .NET RDF for that library, and instead of Apache Wink, it's using uh, some ASP.NET that provide very similar REST services that you'd expect to see uh, from JAXRS. And it does include a change management implementation as well. Uh, our goal is to get that out there, hopefully by the end of the year. But that's dependent on getting its de um, on having its dependencies prerequisites um, be properly approved. <clears throat> 